So, where am I this week um, in working from home as a community curator? Um, honestly, a little bit more anxious. Um, I think we've uh, had the Sunday announcements about easings of lockdown and all these sorts of things. And I think suddenly there, is, there are more questions. In a weird way, been in a nice little um, sort of safe feeling bubble. Um, I very quickly made some decisions. I'm going to make this content, this content and this content. And I've just been focused on doing that. Um, uh, making the children's uh, activity videos for the Wiltshire Museum has honestly been a joy. They're really good fun. And I've been able to involve my own children. Um, and I suppose... Uh, that's the part um, that I'd like to focus on this week. I am working from home with children and trying to balance out um, those two roles, um, feeling uh, like I have a fairly constant split focus. I did a little bit of preparation for doing my uh, blog this week. I spoke to friends who are in similar positions with uh, young children, teenagers, etc etc and sort of um, just ask them what they were finding difficult and I think everybody's kind of come through to a point where um, children are finding this all a bit more emotional or um, have or have got to the point where they're expressing that in different ways I was reading an article in the Guardian this week um, talking about homeschooling um, and I think the title of the article was to be honest some days it's all over by 11 a.m um, and I think that balance, a lot of the advice you read, again, I did a bit of reading around that, a lot of the advice you read about working from home um, is telling you it's all about routine and planning and preparing. Um, have your separate space from your your family space or your you know, leisure space. Have a workspace. Do you know what? When you've got small kids, that's not always possible. Um, you plan to do your work at this particular time or that particular time. Something happens. Um, and or you're up in your separate space and you can hear someone crying <laughs> and you think I should probably maybe I should help um, <laughs> so even when you are being really delineated which is exactly what people would advise you to do if you can in fact um, because I'm lucky in that there are two of us here um, and we're largely able to do one-on-one -on -one off with working although there's some inevitable emailing in the corner. Um, you know, even when you are being able to be quite delineated, there's something, there's always a, a, a slight draw of, of focus. Um, when I'm making my videos and I play something back and I realise that there are screaming children or giggling children or whatever in the background. Right, better do that one again. Um, so there's, there's something that I've now realised. There's like a constant whirl were of 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 something else going on that you don't get when you go out of your house to your office or to your workshop space or whatever um and actually that's kind of building up a little bit um i think trying to be f oh do you know i talked about this in one of my other videos didn't i it's like flexibility of thought it's like okay well i don't have to do it like this I, or i don't have to do this now because i will do it um, but if it happens in 10 minutes, then that's okay. And if it means that I work a bit this evening, then that's fine too. Um, and I think uh, when I was on a Zoom chat with friends and um, one of the things that they spoke about, one of the challenges of just having your kids at home at this period of time was that um, looking at what other people are doing, posting social media. So that becomes your window to the world, right? Um, and seeing that other people are doing this, that or the other. And I look at what I baked today and I get the school newsletter and some people send photographs in of their kids and what they've been doing and they put them in the newsletter. It's just like, oh God, their week looks amazing. And of course it does, because you're not going to share the bit where um, everyone, including you, was having a meltdown that day. <laughs> you're not going to send them a photograph of that, are you? But as I was having that conversation, I suddenly realised that actually you get that with your work as well and um, so your window out into what else is going on in your sector or in in the cultural sector across the board is um 
you know, you're coming across that through being on Twitter and uh, and stuff like that, or newsletters that you were signed up to, etc., etc. This vast list of look at what these guys are doing, look at what that those guys are doing. I'm um, coming across a lot of the children's content from looking for things for my own children. Oh, that's such a great idea. Um, you know, things that wouldn't be relevant to our setting, but it, it, you do get that like, kind of like digital envy thing. Um, and I think that, that something that exacerbates that for parenting and for work is that um, you don't, you could, you're only guessing whether you're doing this right because it's all new. So you're guessing at whether you're homeschooling cor correctly or putting the right amount of emphasis or the being relaxed enough so that it's not a big deal. Um, and then with your work, I have made this. I will send it out into the world and hope that it's OK. Um, so because you're not getting that kind of to and fro of your work colleagues, um, some of the advice for working from home is, of course, staying in touch with your colleagues, which you can do, but it's it's not in the same context. So because you don't have that um, sense of the people around you and whether uh, and where you fit in that, it, looking out into this digital world of of amazing ideas, which is of such value, um, it's really easy to get into a bit of a comparison problem. And and having got through you know, four weeks of just going, I'm just going to make things, I'm just going to make things, I'm just going to make things, I think I'm there. I wonder whether one of the things that I need to do is is actually talk to some other colleagues across the partnership about what they're doing. Um, this is something I'm thinking about as to whether I kind of set up some conversations so that I'm having conversations with people about their challenges and their work that will feed into my work, but it might actually be really good for my mental health as well. So I actually just watched my blog back, which you probably shouldn't do, and realised that there was like a final thought that happened in my head that goes with all the things I've just said, which is I can only do what I can do. I've only got access to the resources I've got access to. I, um, I can only have ideas, share them and see you know, see what is meaningful to m the museums I work in um, and and just to kind of try to relax into that a little bit. It's always good to challenge ourselves and to try and stretch ourselves. So I'm not going to stop looking at what other museums are doing, what other cultural organisations are doing, because it's exciting. Um, but then I can't do all of that is a really important thought.